time-lapse photography of night sky is becoming very popular nowadays. Both professional and hobby photographers are getting interested to make more night escape imagery, especially in time-lapse. Because of longer exposure, you're showing the motion of the sky much faster. Usually in real time, nobody can realize the motion of the sky caused by the earth rotation. Depending on how long the exposure is, you can capture much deeper details of the night sky compared to real-time video. It's almost impossible to capture the details of the Milky Way. We can see in time-lapse video with current technology of real-time videography. The image is taken by photo cameras as much larger resolution compared to video cameras. So instead of shooting only in full HD, for example, with normal DSLR cameras, you can go up to 4K or even larger in videos when you're shooting in time lapse. Many of time lapse photographers who are doing this more seriously, they're using motion control systems from dolly rails, which the camera can move couple of meters or more to panning and tilting devices in various axes. But once you have a tracker, star tracker like Polari, you can also use it for panning or tilting in a time-lapse motion. So you can turn your normal star tracker mount for astrophotography photography to a panning device for time-lapse motions. idea behind this is to just let the tracker know that we are located on, on the pole, on the Earth pole. So that means the Polaris, for example, the North Star is located up at the zenith overhead. That means a tracker like this need to point upward because this is the hole that you need to look through and find Polaris. So from our location, as we are introducing to the tracker, Polaris is at the overhead. So at the North Pole, when Polaris is looking upward, Tracker tries to rotate around and just follow the stars. The stars in the poles of the Earth are just rotating horizontally above the horizon. This is what the Tracker is going to do, just follow the stars along the horizon. And that's exactly what we need for a time-lapse motion in panning. Also use your Star Tracker mount Polari for tilting upward or downward. That's another creative use of the tracker. And in order to do that, you just need to introduce Polari that we are located at the equator. That means Polaris, for example, is right at the horizon. Therefore, the tracker will be vertical like this. And then if you point it this direction, that means this is north, this is where the Polaris is. So when the camera is just uh, shifted 90 degrees from the north is either looking west or the east because the stars at the equator are rising or setting very vertically over the horizon so when you're introducing the tracker that we're looking west for example these are all imaginary suppose because you can point it any direction you can just give it this direction then this becomes north and 90 degrees from this can be west or east so then the tracker would come upward or downward.
The most common use lens in time-lapse photography is generally in the range of 14 mm to 24 on a full-frame sensor camera. So that means in 14 mm you have almost over 100 degrees horizontal field of view and in 24 it's about 70 degrees for a full-frame camera and almost 30% less in many of the crop sensor cameras. And something you need to calculate before doing the motion is that how fast Polari is going to pan across the horizon. So usually any Star Tracker mount is following uh, stars with the speed of the Earth rotation, which is 15 degrees per hour. That's why in 24 hours we have 30 360 degrees one complete rotation. So the normal speed of Polari is 15 degrees per hour. That means in six, seven hours you can uh, go through a whole field of view of a 14 millimeter lens. Thank you. 